In this video, we're going to talk about using Jenkins to run your robot framework tests, and the execution will take place on softlabs.com. Jenkins is my favorite way to run robot framework tests. It's definitely the easiest to use because all you have to do is log into Jenkins and click on a button. On the flip side, though, it's definitely the most complex to configure because ideally your tests are going to live in a Git repository. You need to install the Jenkins web application and the robot framework plugin, and then you've got to create some jobs. And with Jenkins, your automated tests are not the only thing that's going to be triggered. The expectation with continuous integration and continuous testing is that your tests will be part of an automated build pipeline, where when the developers make some changes to code and they check it into Git, the Jenkins system will be listening to changes on Git, and there will be a multi-stage process where Jenkins grabs that new code, builds and deploys it to some servers, perhaps updates the system under tests database and makes other configurations. And then at the end of it, it will trigger your tests to ensure that everything is working as expected. So you can see that Jenkins is not just a mechanism for triggering tests, but it's actually a universe that supports the continuous integration, deployment, and testing of applications. The setup and configuration of Jenkins is beyond the scope of this level one course, but be sure to watch my Jenkins robot framework course, because in that course, I'll take you through everything you need to know about it. This gives you a sense of what continuous integration and testing looks like. As I mentioned, the developer would check in some code to GitHub and Jenkins would be watching that repository for changes. And if something did change, it would build the new code and deploy the artifacts to one or more servers. And then at the end of the chain, it would kick off your tests, which would run against the system under test and report the results back. So let's see what Jenkins looks like. So in this course, we're not gonna look at the entire build pipeline. We're simply gonna look at triggering automated tests for now, but running my tests in Jenkins is really as simple as clicking a button over here. You can see that I've got three different jobs set up, each of which will run the same set of tests on different Sauce Lab configurations of operating system and browser. You can see this one is gonna test Windows 7 and Chrome 41. This one will do Windows 7 and Firefox 37, and this one will do Windows 7 and IE 11. And it really is just as simple as clicking this button to trigger the test. And if I want to run this one as well, I click that button. And a third one, I click this button. And over here on my local machine, you can see I have three different execution threads all happening in parallel. And if we open up the Sauce Labs window, you can see that all three of those tests are in fact running on Sauce Labs. And as I mentioned in the previous video, what's excellent about Sauce Labs is when the tests are done, you can simply click on the link and their system persists screenshots of various steps and also does a video recording of the entire test. So when I click on the screencast tab and click the play button, I can watch the test play back after the fact. So this is obviously really useful if you encounter a failure in your test, you can jump right back in here to Sauce Labs and watch the session play back to see exactly where the problem happened. The way that these Jenkins jobs are configured is you click on the arrow here and select configure. And as we scroll through all the settings here, you can see ultimately what's happening is that I've got a build step which runs the PyBot command, just like we were doing before. Now, as I mentioned, in a production continuous integration system, there would be several build steps that execute prior to our tests being run. But right now in Jenkins, I simply have this one build step set up. You can see that I'm using the PyBot command and I'm passing in the desired capabilities to the Sauce Labs platform and running the same script we've been running. The Robot Framework plugin allows me to set a post build action, which is going to publish the Robot Framework test results and store them here in Jenkins. The reason why that's great is because then we have all of the execution results history instead of overwriting them. And when you click on any one of these links, you can see charts and graphs and execution history. So as I scan through the various builds over here on the left side, you can tell which ones passed and failed. And if I click on any one of these failed executions, it takes me to a page that shows me the test results summary, and I can even click on the log to see exactly what happened on that failure along with any screenshots that were captured. So you can see that Jenkins is clearly the preferred way to run your robot framework tests. To get a true sense of the options you have running on Sauce Labs, go ahead and visit saucelabs.com platforms, and they provide this platform configurator and it allows you to select between Selenium for web or Appium for mobile devices. If I click on Selenium, you can see that I can select either a desktop or iOS or Android because you can run web testing on any of those. If I select PC, 
I can select any of these operating systems, including Windows 7, Windows 8.1, Linux, and so on. If I select Windows 7, for example, I can select any of these browsers. And when I select Chrome, you see how many versions are available. Dev, Beta, the most current version, all the way back to 26. There are slightly fewer options on Internet Explorer, but they also offer Safari and many versions of Firefox as well. I could instead select Linux and have a variety of browsers to choose from as well. Or I could select Mac and choose between various versions of Macintosh operating systems along with the most appropriate browsers for Macintosh. If I instead select Appium, I'm allowed to select Devices and then operating systems for those devices, which version of Appium I'd like to test with. Then I can select web testing or app testing for native mobile apps. So you get the idea, you can run your tests on a wide variety of configurations and you don't have to be in the business of managing those devices or computers with all those browsers. And what you could potentially wind up with in Jenkins here is a long list of different configurations that you could simply run by clicking on a button or when you go into any given job and you configure it, you can select build periodically and you can use cron style syntax to specify when those test cases will run. And if you'd like to, you can even click on poll SCM and also use the same cron style syntax and it will watch a code repository for changes and run the job when it detects that the code has been updated. So combining robot framework with Jenkins and Sauce Labs gives you a very powerful combination for running your automated tests.